Well, thank you very much. This is very important. This is a big event, and I want to just congratulate all of the people standing behind me, because they have done an incredible job. This is something that hasn't been done in more than 25 years. Just a few moments ago, I hosted a very special call with two friends, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel and Crown Prince Mohammed bin Zayed of the United Arab Emirates, where they agreed to finalize a historical peace agreement. Everybody said this would be impossible. Let's uh, move on with the analysis. Dr. Walid Faris joins us, a former foreign policy advisor to Mitt Romney back in 2012, and a former advisor to the current U.S. President Donald Trump. Dr. Faris, thank you very much for joining us here in France 24. Um, Iran, it's yeah. just coming to us here, sir. Iran officially says uh, the UAE-Israel deal will not secure regional peace. Can I ask you to start with that, please? Absolutely. I mean, this was probably the most expected statement which will come from uh, Iran, from Hezbollah, from the usual suspects in the list of the forces that are radical and do not want to see any deal before they get their own deal. Uh, but definitely President Trump, the leaders of both Israel and the UAE have already factored in the Iranian reaction. And in my estimate, because they found that Iran is at its lowest influence now because of the maximum campaign of pressure by the United States, it would be the opportune moment for uh, Abu Dhabi and Tel Aviv to uh, create that uh, deal. Is this an axis then against Iran or is it a step towards peace or are the two things interdependent? They are interdependent. Probably in the big picture is the formation of a regional bloc. Uh, we know that de facto uh, Abu Dhabi or UAE, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and others have formed a bloc. And by the way, President Trump went in May of 2017 to Riyadh and addressed his dream coalition that would be all the Arab and Muslim countries, or at least the majority of them. And the project of creating those channels of uh, peace to diffuse tensions between some Arab countries and Israel that project was supposed to start in 2017 after the Riyadh uh, summit. Unfortunately for the Trump administration, there was so much pressure on the inside for other reasons that it was delayed. And I'm sure that the president wanted to see it happening before the elections, that's for sure. Um, can I bring you back to the uh, Palestinians? You mentioned in your first answer Hezbollah uh, condemning uh, what has been said, obviously, from the, the Lebanese side. Moving down to the Gaza Strip, Hamas. Uh, has uh, come out now and said that they uh, think this is treasonous, what's been gone, gone on. And a similar voice coming from uh, Ramallah as well, uh, from the office of Mahmoud Abbas. Um, the issue uh, of this statement, talking about this accord, talking about the future of Palestinian territory, but the Palestinians not invited to take part or even talk about it. Is this another weak spot, do you think, another fault line in this accord? Let me make a distinction that's very important, not just theoretically, but in the world of reality. We have to distinguish between the, the ideological strategic rejection of any peace deal because of historical ideological ground. That would be Iran, that would be Hezbollah, that would be Hamas. And probably on the other side, on the Sunni radical side, you're going to have ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and others. This jihadi, quote, unquote, bloc is not going to accept these processes. But you have a criticism and a rejection coming from legitimate side, which is the Palestinian Authority, as you have just mentioned. Obviously, this is the first statement because, as you just mentioned also, they were not at the negotiations. And they were not at the negotiations because this is not yet about the Palestinian discussion. So President Trump, in my view, proceeded to bring first, bring together the UAE and Israel with the help in the background of Egypt and Jordan. Once those two countries will come together, then they're going to bring the Palestinians into a triangular and maybe a, you know, four sides negotiation with the United States. This is so early in the process. This is just announcing the intentions, in my view. Dr. Wally Faris, thank you very much indeed for joining us here in France 24. We always appreciate your time, sir. Thank you.